Hey guys, I wanted to quickly come on and explain the mechanics of the yen carry trade. You might have heard a lot about it and wondering what exactly goes into it. Um, also, this was one of the biggest, this was the biggest carry trade in the world that is now collapsing and uh, we are still not, not done. We're probably you know, halfway there. So uh, the effects of it might still keep impacting the markets. Uh, so let's let's try to understand what's going on. Essentially, the carry trade was something that was uh, uh, that benefited a lot of the institutions and investors around the world that allowed them to borrow yen very cheap when their interest rates was at uh, at the floor, zero percent. And uh, this allowed them to borrow a lot of money, a lot of yen, and convert that into a, another currency and invest it elsewhere. So essentially, this was a an arbitrage opportunity between an economy that has a very low interest rate and other economies that have higher interest rates and higher returns. And uh, this was essentially free money as long as the currencies were not fluctuating significantly. And because of that, many, many investors over the last couple of decades have piled on and added to this trade. So that's why this has turned into one of the biggest trades and, uh, frankly, easiest money that Wall Street has made. But uh, right now it's ending. So let's see why and how. All right, I have a few slides on this. Here is the long-term government bond yields, the 10-year uh, rates, 10-year yields for Japan from uh, 1990s up or onward. So the yield began dropping after their economic unwind, and uh, it dropped pretty consistently since then up until 2016 that it hit zero and went below zero actually, and, it, and went below zero again towards the end of 2019. But after 2022, this was the first time Japan began experiencing some inflation. And because of that, they began hiking. And more recently, instead of uh, what the market expected, which was uh, some stimulus, the Bank of Japan said that they are much more worried about the inflation rather than the economic recovery. So they hiked rates again, and that pushed the yen's rate upward because of that the easy money in the yen carry uh, got squeezed and uh, some people were pushed out of their positions uh, here you can see the comparison between the japanese yields and the u.s 10-year yield you can see can, there has been a consistent gap between the two so you could easily uh, borrow some money in japan and come back and buy u.s u.s bonds so let's take a look at the mechanics of this trade. And again, as I said, the rates are low in Japan and investment returns are higher than that elsewhere. So you go to Japan, borrow a huge uh, amount of money. Here, I'm just using small numbers, 1 billion yen. So you go to, you go to a Japanese bank and you borrow 1 billion yen. Uh, imagine the interest rate there is zero. So you essentially uh, don't have to pay any interest on it. And um, at the end of the year, you simply have to return the 1 billion yen. Okay, so what you will do is you convert that yen into USD using a conversion rate of 160. So one, 1 USD equals 160 Japanese yen. So once you do the conversion, you get about $6 million uh, in, your, in, in some US bank. You can invest it in many different instruments. Uh, you can put it in... Uh, the stock market, NASDAQ, or you can put it in T-bills, which today uh, return 5% annually. So if you do that, you earn $35,000 at the end of the year, and your total assets uh, go up uh, by that same amount to $6,281,000. And imagine the conversion rate hasn't changed. So once you convert that back into yen, uh, you have more yen than you, you initially borrowed. So right now, uh, once you do the conversion, you get 1 billion and 5 million yen, but you only owe uh, 1 billion to the bank. So you pay that and then you're left with 5 million yen in profit, easy money after one year, right? But all of this assumes that the conversion rate remains the same and uh, also your interest rates don't materially change and so on. 
But what happened lately was that the USDJPY rate I plummeted by a substantial amount from 162 to 144 at the time I collected the data. So it might have changed slightly, but uh, about 10% uh, drop since uh, since the recent highs. And that squeezed a lot of the investors that had planned on a higher rate. And now all of their calculations are uh, are inaccurate. So this is what happens in that scenario. So you borrow the same amount of yen, you convert it with the old rate, and then you do the investment, you earn all the money, so everything goes well. However, once you want to convert it back to yen, or even before you do that, uh, uh, the bank calls you and says, hey, the rate has changed. Now the rate is 144. So for, uh, when you're converting this dollar, back to yen, you get a lot less yen. And what, when that happens, uh, you know, hap you know, if the change is sufficient, the total assets you have after conversion is going to be is going to be below what you owe to the bank. So you're underwater, you get uh, the margin call and you have to liquidate some of your other US assets. Um, and that's, that's why uh, a lot of the assets have have sold off lately because the people have to raise uh, raise money to to pay back uh, and, and close the carry positions. So this is the reason a global scale trade is unwinding. Uh, a lot of people had counted on uh, Japanese yen continually losing value and making the carry trade more and more profitable. But uh, the Bank of Japan surprised everybody and the inflation um, that is primarily caused by the energy inflation is uh, changing the calculus for uh, everybody. And as they unwind this trade, assets are sold. And as assets are sold, uh, other people are squeezed further and further because you sell USD to raise Japanese yen. Japanese yen appreciates, and that makes the problem that much worse for everyone else. So it's kind of a cascade, cascading event. Uh, it's it's a self perpetuating cycle that will go on for some time. And uh, if I had to guess, I would say we are we are done with 50, 60 percent of it. We had one leg down. But uh, after the market stabilizes for a while, we, we will probably experience the rest of the effect. So thanks a lot for your time. Hopefully this helps. See you in the next video.